Hi, I'm Paul Blessard. I've been riding normal motorbikes for about 40 years, but I've been riding electric ones for longer than most people as well. I first rode an electric bicycle in 1993, and I first rode an electric motorcycle in 1998. I've been riding electric motorcycles and scooters regularly for more than a decade now. And uh, I've ridden all kinds of things. I've ridden half-ton, fully enclosed Paravis monotracers, and I've ridden tiny little stand-up go anywhere scooters but today I'm going to ride on the road and the trail a thing called a Suron, a Suron Light B which is a, doesn't exactly trip off the tongue but I, I did have a, a good little blast on one last year at the Goodwood Festival of Speed where they had a pop-up trail park um, but that was the pure off-road version this is essentially the same bike but it's road legal so it's got indicators, number plate, horn so on and so forth um, I'm going to take it for a little spin. It's super light. It's got a magic power button. Um, I've only had a quick spin on it so far, but it was really a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to this little bit of on on road, green road, dirt road, trail riding little session. What exactly is the Sir Run Paul? Is it a, a mountain bike on steroids or is it a, a want to be trail bike? I, th I would say it's a proper super lightweight trail bike. It's got loads of suspension, it just happens to be incredibly light. It's got plenty of power for trail riding in, the, in this sort of going. Um, sure, you wouldn't, you know, it's not. In the right hands, it could embarrass all sorts of things. I mean, I, I'm too old and decrepit to embarrass youngsters, but for an old bugger like me, it does make riding very easy, you know. I mean, I'd like, I should wind up the suspension a bit, really, but it, it's, it's a bit twitchy, for, but it's, it's really easy. It's so light and forgiving. And uh, I actually really like having the left handlebar rear brake because with my knackered knees and hips, I struggle sometimes to get the rear brake when I'm riding, you've got to readjust your feet and it's just handy to be able to just touch the, the on the left handlebar. The, th the throttle is a, is, is a bit on and off, a bit more so than I'd like, uh, especially in sport mode, but you know I'm, I'm still getting used to it and uh, no, it's just a really, I mean I, I rode this trail on a big heavy uh, Royal Enfield Himalayan last year and uh, you know, with, with the wrong tyres on it. And, and this is just this is a complete piece of cake by comparison. What's the top speed of the Sir on, on the road? In sport mode, it'll do about 45. In, in moped mode, obviously, it's restricted to 28 miles an hour. 45 miles an hour would put it in roughly the same category as the sport mopeds of the 1970s. Do you think that's a fair comparison? Yeah, well, as, as someone who's old enough to have actually owned a sports moped in the 70s, uh, my Gorelli record. For, and funnily enough, I always wanted the Tiger Cross, which was the trailey motocrossy model, and record was more the road one, um, although the record was more suitable for the road. But this is like a Gorelli record of the 70s, but that had a super tuned 50cc engine before mopeds were restricted to 30 miles an hour. I mean, they genuinely did do 50 or even 60 miles an hour, those Gorellis. They used to eat. FS1E Yamahas for breakfast well, until they ate their spark plugs with a 12 to 1 compression ratio and four gears and everything. But this has got that kind of performance, you know, just with twist and go. I mean, it hasn't got the top end because it does top out at about 45, whereas they would do genuine 55. But it, in terms of acceleration, um, it, it's, it's, it's more, it's more like an 80 um, or even a 125 four-stroke maybe and uh, it's yeah it, it's super fun super fun How did the Suron cope with the terrain? It was absolutely brilliant. It just just went straight up the first the first really steep bit. Um, it just I was just sitting down as it was smooth, and it just went smooth as silk 
straight up that first bit. Then we stopped about the first third, and there was a flat bit. And I, it actually, I mean, I see relatively flat, still going uphill. And I put it just into echo mode for that bit, having done the first bit in sport. And it easily did that second third in uh, echo mode. And then the last bit, which was really steep, put it back into sport and I stood on the pegs for the first time and it went really light at the front and I had it for the first time I had the throttle against the stop um, but it just chugged up it uh, you know it, I, I'm, it had it, it was giving everything it had got but uh, as you saw it went you know it went straight up We've only done 38.8 kilometres, that's not miles, so we've done under 25 miles, even though we've been going mainly gently. Uh, so it's time to see if we can find a top-up. Uh, notice also the flashing light, that's just started flashing as a warning thing, when it went on, when it just got from 21 down to 20%. We just need to beg or blag some new juice, some fresh juice, uh, even if we have to pay for it, which would only be a few pennies anyway, but I mean, this is the only drawback really, is the, is the limited range, and we're just getting close to the limit, so time for some juice. Okay, we're up to 58% after just over an hour at Robbie's Place Fish and Chip Shop. And this time we remember to flick over the, the red. Oh my god, it's stiff. That's it, clicked over. Click shut. Put the cap on, the charging port. Oh yes, good thinking. Switch on and. 58% you, you struggled coming up there it looked like the bike was delivering too much torque for the, the slippery rock that we were riding up. What do you got to say about that? Well, I think there's a couple of things. One is there's, I think it's a, a, a certain different technique that you need to learn to get the best out of an electric in a tricky situation because on a, you know, like on your Surro or any other conventional bike, the places where you'd slip the clutch you know, to give yourself that extra bit of control. And of course, there's no clutch to slip here. So, and also the drive can be, when you're, you know, you stop for a split second, then you wind it on again. There's a sort, there's a, can be a little bit of delay. And then you can suddenly get more than you bargain for. And you can't, you know, with a clutch, you could, if, you, if it lurches a bit too much, you can just pull the clutch and kill the, kill the drive. You can't do that with this. It's either on or off. And also I've got, <laughs> In my current decrepit old man state, I discovered this afternoon that I, I can't really dab, you know, I can't paddle in the way I used to be able to, or anyone, most people can, you know, to, just to save it in that tricky situation where you just need a, a nice dab with your foot to maintain balance. And I'm more likely to just fall over. I get my foot down and it's too late. And also these boots, I forgot, they have a habit of snagging on the footrest. And then, of course, the other thing is, 
we've got it on a very soft setting. And the difference between my 15 stone, or 16 probably with all my gear on, sat on the back wheel and then getting off it, uh, that spins the wheel much more easily when there's no weight on it. So when I got off to push, I put it in echo mode, stop the wheel spinning. But then, and the other thing I found was that if it does spin up, if it really spins up, then it seems to sort of need to kind of reset itself a bit. It can sort of go on strike for a few seconds. So that was an added little complication. So that's why, I mean, I you know, you can see there are bits when when I'm riding, I can ride okay. But when things go wrong, and I I don't, I no longer have the wherewithal to get myself out of trouble in the way that I used to. So it's a bit sort of shit or bust, really, basically. <laughs> I mean, I I would like to think that if I had another run at it, knowing what's coming, I might a go with a bit more. You know, momentum is everything. Getting up a thing like that. Although I have to say that. The two big rock steps were pretty awesome, and the, the fact that you not only got the server, I mean, you say you've got a KLR up there is very impressive because I wouldn't like to say that I could have got KLR up there in, even in my prime, but it's a, you know, it's a tricky, it's a tricky climb, definitely. Um, but I think, I think a fit, good fit young rider could learn some slightly subtly different techniques. Um, and the other thing which we haven't mentioned up to now is that one thing that people do when you, the, the way it's set up as standard is that if you touch the brake that automatically switches off the drive whereas you know good good really good off-road riders quite often will you dab a bit of rear brake for a bit of edge of control while they've got the power on and you obviously can't do that you can't put the power on and have the brake on so I think a really good ride. If if that were disconnected, I think you might be able to almost use that like a clutch. Um, so you know, there's a few things to think about. But you know, it, we got up here and bikes still working. I'm still working. You know, that was that was definitely the challenge of the day. That was much more of a challenge than the the, the graded one, the star lane that we did earlier. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm annoyed that I dropped it, but. Put it down to old age and decrepitude. Where in the UK can we buy a Suron electric bike? Well, there's dealers all over the country. If you look on the Suron website, Suron UK, Google that, it should bring it up. How much is it to buy one of these bikes on the road? This road legal version is 4495 on the road. The off-road only version, if you've got your own private track or ground to ride on, is 4195. But don't imagine that you can ride it like an electric bicycle. It's not. This is an electric moped stroke motorcycle. So if you want to ride it on the road or green lanes, byways, it has to be a road legal version. Being wholly electric, is it safe to ride this bike through water? Yeah, well, we just been doing it. Uh, we've been through two different Fords, uh, one quite a long one with no problem at all and I've ridden zeros through water as well uh, with no problems whatsoever. So you know as long as the thing is well made and well uh, insulated against water then there's, there's no problem at all. What's the bike like to manoeuvre at slow speed? Well, it, it's the lightest trail bike I've ever ridden. It's the easiest to turn in a tight space. It's brilliant for turning around in a narrow trail or byway. You know, it, it's the easiest thing I've ever turned around. It's got really good lock, really tight turning circle. Uh, you can run it up a bank and back, round, in, or you'll spin it. You know, you can you can spin the back wheel to uh, spin it round. Great. Is it difficult to balance on, or is it easy? It's it's easy to balance on. The, the only thing that can catch you out is the is the throttle on and off because sometimes sometimes there can be a little bit of lag and then you think and then you give it some more and then it suddenly powers in, especially if you're in sport mode and of course you haven't got a clutch to, to feather it. So that that's something I still feel I could improve on, just getting the feel of when it's how to make it bite when it when you want it to. Um, but you know it's a it's a very capable trail bike. 
the, I'd say that you know the biggest drawback is is the lack of range at the moment. Hi, all silver.